Hi everyone, my name is Natalie. Today I wanted to do a book tag video. Uh, so I've seen um, Lauren from Lauren and the Books and Dave from Wild Reads do this tag recently. It's called the bookshelf tag and all of the questions obviously relates to your bookshelves and your TBR and whatnot. So uh, let's jump right into the questions. The first question is how many bookshelves do you have? Uh, I have four identical uh, Billy the Black Brown edition um, shelves. So there's uh, two different uh, heights to these uh, Billy bookshelves. I have the, the regular uh, 202 centimeters, I think, height, and the top shelf uh, added to two of the shelves and two shelves I just added recently. So I have four bookshelves in total. Uh, the second question is how many books do you have on your bookshelves? I have a, a bit more than 260 unread books on my shelves, quite a few read books as well. In total I would say probably between 400 and 500 books on my shelves. The third question is how do you organize your books? So I currently have my unread books and my read books separate. Um, I really like having them separate because it's easier to find books you want to read um, and I also do have sort of an organization going in my unread books um, in that I usually have them in genres or themes. Um, I do tend to shift the way I organize them uh, once in a while uh, to move them around so I'm more uh, prone to see things that I might have forgot I had. The fourth question is what is the oldest book you have on your bookshelves? And that is The Scarlet Letter by Nathaniel Hawthorne and this edition was from I think 1890. 1892. Uh, so this is an, a vintage edition. I do collect a few uh, vintage books. Uh, so I do have a lot of other books like from the early uh, 20th century, but this is one of the few that I have from the 19th century. The fifth question is what is the newest book on your bookshelves? The Lost Words by Robert McFarlane and Jackie Morris. This is one of the Wayne Wright shortlisted books for this year, uh, but this came out I think in the beginning of the year. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, and I just picked it up from the post office yesterday, so it is very new uh, on my shelves. The sixth question is, what is the longest book on your bookshelf? Uh, and I'm guessing it is the Bible, the uh, King James translation. I bought this last year, um, I think uh, around May time, um, because of Steve Donahue, he did a playlist called Western Canon Starter Kit. Um, series on his channel where he talked about a few books that had um, that had a really big impact on the uh, history of literature. I think he described it as having the longest shadows in literature. This edition is almost 2,000 pages but uh, a lot of that is the notes. I'm not a Christian at all uh, and I haven't really had an interest in reading the Bible for most of my life um, but I have been interested in reading it because there's so many um, like contemporary fiction and movies and all kinds of media that reference things in the Bible and I wish that I could sort of pick up on those references more. Uh, so that is the main reason I really want to read this. The seventh question is what is the shortest book on your bookshelves? Uh, and I decided to go with two, Hansel and Gretel and the girl with the, the little match girl. <laughs> that is the that is the title in English. Uh, so this is uh, illustrated by Jan Gustafsson and this is illustrated by Sven Otto S. Uh, so these are both um, books that I have had since my childhood so obviously they are also some of the oldest books I've owned. I read them uh, as a child and was frightened by both of them in different ways. This uh, always had my mom crying uh, so I don't think she read it very often to me. I think I probably read this mostly to myself. Uh, but this especially I like. I love the illustrations of this. Uh, as I said, it is illustrated by Sven Otto S, which doesn't tell me much. But I love the illustration style of this and I always found this uh, fairy tale to be extremely scary. The eighth question is, what is the predominant genre on your bookshelves? Uh, this was a really interesting question because I, I feel like it isn't super obvious to me uh, what I have 
most of on my bookshelves. So the uh, the thing that comes up uh, immediately for me is nonfiction. Um, I've been buying a lot of nonfiction this year. I think I've probably bought more nonfiction books this year than I have fiction books. So I think I'm swayed by the fact that the most recent adding I've done is nonfiction. Uh, but I'm not sure if uh, that is enough to be bigger in, in the majority of the books that I have on my shelves. Probably nonfiction is one of the biggest genres on my bookshelves and nonfiction isn't even really a genre because it's like an umbrella term so it's kind of cheating. Uh, but nonfiction and classics I think is probably the biggest part. Uh, the ninth question is have you done a bookshelf tour? I haven't done a bookshelf tour and I might do someday in the future, we shall see. The tenth question is go on a random number generator and talk about the book that corresponds with that number. So I've got uh, Little Red Riding Hood, Uncloaked, Sex, Morality and the Evolution of a Fairy Tale by Katherine Ornstein. I bought this a few years ago, I think if not last year. I saw this first on Jane Campbell's uh, book channel. She talks a lot about fairy tales and um, nonfiction about fairy tales and she does her Fairy Tales with Jen a series that I'm absolutely loving um, and I'm sort of uh, watching a lot of the older episodes recently. So this is I think a book that she's mentioned either in a bookshelf tour or in a recommendations video and it is a non-fiction book about the Little, Re Little Red Riding Hood and sort of the, the ways that it has been interpreted and uh, how it discusses gender over time and how many different versions of it exists. Uh, so I've actually read like a third of this book and I really enjoyed it but I was reading too many books at the same time when I picked this up. Uh, so one day I would really like to get back to this. I really love in general books about um, storytelling and uh, how storytelling sort of reflects the way that um, that the society works and sort of the ideals of the time. So yeah, I really enjoyed the parts that I read of this uh, and would like to return to it one day. Uh, the 11th question is, do you have any fan merch or any de decorations on your bookshelves? I don't really have a lot of decorations. I have like a book stand, general things in the bottom parts of the shelf. I have ended up having some documents and things like that. But the only merch kind of thing or even um, intentional decoration is an ice globe that my sister and sister got from from Paris to me um, because she knows I love Disney so she went to the Disney store uh, to get this for me. Why am I saying ice globe when it's a snow globe? Anyway, uh, the uh, snow globe. So uh, as you might be able to tell it has lost one of the ears on the Mickey head at the top and that is what happens when you travel. So uh, yeah, so that, that got lost uh, in, in transit, but uh, yeah, I really love it. And the 12th question is, show us your bookshelves. So I've done a few shots of my bookshelves uh, around so you can see just a general overview uh, and I'm not gonna go into any details because this is not a bookshelf tour. The uh, bookshelf on the left is the one with the red books and the other three are the ones with the unread books. Uh, so as you can tell I have more unread books than I have read books. The main reason for that is because I get rid of a lot of books that I've read and that I don't necessarily want to keep. Uh, I want to have my collection as um, relevant to my interests and my uh, likes as possible. Uh, yeah, so that was the bookshelf tag. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you're having a really good day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.